In this short video, we're going to take you through creating a new project in MPLAB X IDE, some of the different types of projects, and then we're going to look at the project dashboard because this is where you will remake or change some of the decisions that you make in the new project wizard. Let's get going. So in MPLAB X IDE, I plug in my kit. So what I'm going to take from the output window here is just copy the part number and then as I create a new project, here I have the wizard and the different types of project that are available to me. Most of the time you're probably going to use a standalone project or you can see that there are options for importing a existing version 8 project. And videos are available on how to import a start project or an Atmel Studio project. Uh, library projects as if you're compiling a project to be reused and linked in for many other projects or if you're building your own makefile project. So here we're going to just be looking at a standalone project. Here I can paste my part number and you can see the options. If uh, The simulator is always a good option. If you don't have a tool, uh, you can see that the tool I have is detected. Here we have all the different toolchain options. You can see that Atmel Studio provides the GCC toolchain option for either AVR or SAM. You can see that there are assembler options. I'm going to use the XEDA 2.2 compiler. The main project is the project which all the toolbar icons act on. Right, so as the new project opens, you can see that there are no files in the project except a make file. So the first thing you're going to do is probably look for a main.c. This is a recently used list, so initially you'll first click on other. Under microchip embedded here, we have our XC compiler. And if you want traditional C main files or C++, etc., you can find that here as well. So we're going to choose an AVR main. OK, so now let's look at our project dashboard. In project properties, here you can see the different options. MPLAB X now supports devices through the device family packs. So to find out more about family packs, we could just type it in the how do I bar. So here we search developer help and here packs and projects. And we can get an overview of what actually it means when we're installing MPLAB X and selecting device families. So essentially we are adding the family packs for those devices here for that device support. And here we can get an overview of the pack manager, which is available under tools, packs, tools, packs. And here is the pack manager. You can see options of the debugger here. For instance, you can see the communication. But most of these options or the key ones are exposed here. So for instance, here you can see the PCOB Nano and UPDI. If we select power, here for instance we can select if we want to power a target circuit and the voltage level that we'd want to use. You can see the options of the chosen compiler. For instance, we now have code coverage as a paid feature for XC8. The next thing we're going to do is refresh debug tool status. And as you do that, you can see that a whole lot more information is populated. We now have debugger firmware version, the target voltage supply, USB, etc. So one of the first things you're going to probably want to do is find a data sheet. So here you can open device data sheet, HTML browser, and you can see it finds it pretty directly. If I save this data sheet, then select Browse for Local. The second time I do that, the path is remembered, so it is quite quick and easy to open the data sheet like that. So here I can access the compiler help. This happens to be an AVR project, and here I can access the C compiler guide for AVR. There we have it. And here you will toggle software and hardware breakpoints. Here you can see it's enabled now and disabled. And if you want to know more about debugging, have a look at the advanced debugging with MPLABX series. We start off gentle, don't worry. 
So that was a quick overview of creating a new project in MPLabX.